Hi everyone, my name is Raquel Ortasen. I'm the Chief Scientist at WTG, as well as a professor at the University of Toronto. In this talk, I will provide an overview of what HD maps are, why they are useful for cell driving, as well as how to create them. Two types of maps are used in cell driving cars. Topological maps, as well as high definition maps, typically referred to as HD maps. Topological maps contain a diverse set of attributes, such as the road topology, the number of lines in a street segment, the location and shape of buildings, or the direction of travel. These topological maps are used by driving teams to have an understanding of the potential difficulty for a given geographical area. They are also used online by the driving vehicle to help plan a high-level route to go from point A to point B. There are many data sources that can be exploited to generate topological maps. Cameras mounted on windshields are available at scale, as many drivers use them for insurance purposes. Aerial images captured by drones, planes, and satellites can also be used. And of course, we can also use cell driving vehicles for this purpose. To obtain topological maps, a set of methods apply road binary segmentation on aerial or satellite images, followed by post processing algorithms to obtain the road network. The strength of these methods lies in that they can use the state of the art segmentation methods to obtain the roads. However, this will also be the weakness since the road network extraction depends on the segmentation quality. For example, if there are occlusions due to building shadows and trees, the extraction might fail. What is also dependent on the post processing algorithm use, which might be uh, proven to be very brittle. Another class of methods was the topology extraction problem as a structure prediction task. For example, Matisse et al. enhance open street maps with semantic elements such as lanes, parking spots, sidewalks, etc., by aligning aerial images with the steady imagery obtained from a driving car and minimizing an energy function that outputs these elements. The neural turtle graphics uh, sequentially generates a graph representation of the road layout using deep RNNs. It can also be applied to obtain the road layout from aerial imagery. Finally, Leal used deep RNNs on top of the features from an aerial image to directly output polygons corresponding to building footprints and polylines corresponding to road segments. The second, uh, type of road, uh, sorry, the second type of maps used in self driving vehicles are high definition maps which contain both detailed geometry and semantic information about the environment. These are used for precise localization of the cell driving vehicle and also as prior knowledge for the autonomous system and for simulation. Cell driving companies are interested in creating globally consistent 3D maps of the world. In the industry, many passes over the same area are required for these maps to be complete. However, we would like to reduce this requirement as this is very expensive. Furthermore, maps typically require a large amount of memory to be stored, preventing them from being able to be produced and used at scale. Finally, we would like the maps, uh, the maps to be uh, to only contain permanent elements that we will see every time we drive around the map area. Building geometric maps is typically a three-step process where the data is first collected by a fleet of vehicles. This data is then uploaded, and the problem is decomposing to trajectory fitting of small chunks of data, which can be performed in parallel. And this is then combined into a massive uh, global optimization problem, which can be solved, for example, with graph slam techniques. The result is high fidelity maps of our cities. In the video, you can see reconstruction using both laters as well as cameras, which are very complementary in order to perform this task. In this reconstruction, we have removed potentially dynamic objects, for example, moving and parked cars, by exploiting a state-of-the-art semantic segmentation. This is illustrated in the video here, where every frame is processed with only a fraction of a second. Filtering these dynamic objects is important and results in much crisper maps. This is illustrated in green versus red, where in red we still see uh, the um, 
non-permanent elements that we would like to get it removed. HD maps contain also very rich semantic information. This includes the location of traffic, lights, lanes, crosswalks, as well as the rules of traffic at each intersection and road segment. As illustrated here, this is extremely complex and a great prior for a day autonomy system. These semantic layers are typically manually annotated with very little automation, a process extremely tedious, time consuming and expensive. But don't forget that we are interested in middle and large scale maps of our block, our neighborhood, our cities, countries, and beyond. In order to create semantic HD maps at the scale, we need to design approaches that can leverage both machines as well as humans. Humans are necessary as the level of fidelity required in cell driving is way beyond what the state of the art can be. Cell driving companies are particularly interested in designing approaches where machines and humans can collaborate to minimize the total dollar spent. Knowing where the road boundaries are, that is, delineating the separation of the driver surface of the road from sidewalks is crucial for safety and navigation. Currently in the industry, human annotators draw these road boundaries from scratch as part of the HD map production. This is a very expensive task since we need to annotate whole cities and as such is not scalable. As part of the annotation process, first one needs, one needs to aggregate later and camera images from multiple passes of the mapping vehicles through an area to create versus view images then at the VEV of a certain resolution. This can be, for example, as little as five centimeters per pixel. Next, hundreds of human annotators look at these VAV later ground camera images and draw out the road boundaries one by one as polylines. There are also multiple QA rounds to make sure that these polylines are correct and precise. So in this work, um, we aim to automate the initial annotation process so that human laborers only need to do the QA and adjust the wrong predictions or draw the missing boundaries rather than annotating everything from scratch. There is also a plethora of related work in academia. In the old days, IT control models were used to obtain these road boundaries from intensity images. However, one needed lots of heuristics to remove noise from the images and make these, mo and make these models work. Recently, many works treat this problem as a binary cement uh, semantic segmentation task of road pixels versus not, followed by some post-processing to obtain the road boundaries. These methods are not very precise since they do not directly reason about the road boundaries. Hence, we tackle this problem by directly outputting polylines for each road boundary from these verse view inputs. The input to the model is the later and BEV imagery and later elevation gradient. We also further remove dynamic objects from radar using our automatic 3D segmentation, which I showed before in the video. These are inputted to a deep convolutional network that outputs visual cues on the position of the road boundaries. In particular, we output an inverse distance transform image that encodes the relative distance from each pixel in the image to the closest road boundary pixel. This provides more signal and just boundary segmentation. An endpoint heat map, which is the probability of the pixel in the endpoint of a road boundary. This provides a strong guidance on where to start and draw um, or stop drawing uh, the polylines. And finally, the road boundary di direction map, which encodes the normal direction towards the closest road boundary. This encourages the polyline vertices to move towards the road boundaries. Next. Drawing on the deep detection and directional features obtained from the input image and the location of the endpoints and convolutional recurrent network iteratively attempts to rotate uh, regions of interest in the image and outputs the vertices of a polyline corresponding to a road boundary. The direction of travel of the RNN is obtained from the direction map. We obtain all the road boundaries one by one as such. In this video, we can see the results of our uh, model on the test set. On the left, 
reduce uh, the ground truth road boundary polylines. On the right, on the right uh, we see the output of our model. <clears throat> the yellow rotated boxes correspond to the region of interest that the recurrent CNN attends to sequentially. The blue dots are the predicted vertices. Note that all intersections and areas of high curvature, uh, the model has learned to place the vertices closer to each other. We also tackle the problem of automatically drawing crosswalk boundaries. Existing approaches focus on, prediction, on predicting the existence of a crosswalk, but do not provide an accurate localization. Instead, crosswalks are typically crowdsourced and manually drawn in industry. Here we draw crosswalks as poly, uh, polygons. Our model takes as input the later adversary view imagery, which is fed into a CNN to output inverse distance transform, segmentation, and angle alignment heat map. Next, we take advantage of the road boundaries that have already been drawn and exploit the structure prediction to create the final drawing. By leveraging distance transform and integral accumulators, the efficient exact inference is possible. Our model achieves 96.6% automation of crosswalks. In this video, we showcase our model results, which are on the top right, compared to the ground truth, which is in the bottom right. We see that our model draws very accurate crosswalks when compared to the ground truth, and thus achieves very high level of automation. Next, after discussing how to automate road boundary and crosswalk extraction, we tackle the task of drawing lane boundaries. The lane boundaries have to be very precise to prevent the SDV inadvertently crossing into other lanes. In particular, we focus on highways, which offer interesting topologies that are the first step before automating this task for cities. Instead of requiring multiple passes of the vehicle, which is costly, here we aim to map from only one pass of the vehicle through the area. We formulate the problem as discovery and inference in a directed acyclic traffical model, a DAG, where the nodes correspond to geographic and topological attributes. Given a temporarily aggregated LIDAR point cloud projected onto Versailles view, we aim to find the maximum posteriority of the probability over all the possible DAGs that could describe the road. The probability distribution of each DAG can be factorized as the product of the probability distributions of its vertices and each vertex condition of its parents in a random, um, sorry, and the, and each vertex condition to its parents is a random variable with the following uh, uh, three attributes. The direction of this vertex um, given the parent vertex, the geometrical position of the vertex, the topological state of the vertex as in no change, fork, merge, and stop drawing. The space of the possible graphs is exponentially large. So we critically construct the graph and compute the geometric and topological properties of each vertex. We demonstrate the inference process with the figures on the right. On the top, assume we have the already inferred DAG at the current time step. Next, we find the direction of the next vertex highlighted in yellow rotate, uh, the yellow rotated um, region of interest, or ROI. Then, we infer the position of the vertex in the ROI and its state, which is inferred to be a fork. At this fork, we continue drawing the current lane boundary assist, but emanate a new one corresponding to the new lane boundary at the fork. These probability distributions are complicated. As such, we use neural networks to approximate them. A deep CNN takes as input the Versailles view later image of a large area of the road and outputs a distance transform image to the lane boundaries and a feature map that captures global context. We use the distance transform image to obtain the initial points of the lane boundaries. Then, using three convolutional RNNs, we greatly approximate the probability distributions of each vertex and iteratively draw out the lane boundary polygons. Finally, in this video, we show the output of our model on long stretches of the highway. In this case, it's a highway around Arizona. 
you can see how well we can produce complex lane topologies, which are very, very close to the ones uh, created by the grand tree. Importantly, we can use other modes of data capture, such as drones, and exploit this approach to obtain lane graphs, close walks, as well as the, lane, uh, the road boundaries. This is very exciting because suddenly we can capture uh, with much less expensive um, sensors. Now we turn our focus to the problem of online lane detection. That is, inferring the position and topology of all the lane boundaries with respect to the SDB as it drives. This task is crucial for safety as the prior SD maps might have changed, say, due to construction and uh, uh, also localization failures. This requires the SDB to accurately map the environment online. Also, we require the inferred lens to eventually reside in 3D, as this is the space in which the SDB reasons about. There are many works that detect the lanes in 2D camera space. They typically use deep learning to segment the lane boundary pixels, followed by clustering the pixels belonging to individual lanes and then fitting a spline to each cluster. Some other works incorporate geometric cues, for example, vanishing points, in order to embed ge geometric context in the background network. However, I would like to stress the important, the important fact that doing precise lens detection in 2D does not imply precise lens in 3D, which is the space we really care about. For example, in the image below, we show the results of predicting the probability of lens boundaries in 2D and then reprojecting them onto overhead view. The input camera image overlay with the predictions from panning out is shown on the left. The lane probability output of the model in camera view is shown on next, followed by the reprojection of the probability output into overhead view. Although the lane detections in camera view look quite impressive, the probability outputs become diffuse with increasing distance, and the detected lane boundaries becomes less accurate in 3D. There are also works that directly reason about the lane boundary in the 3D space. For example, 3D LaneNet applies inverse perspective transform to the features of a single language to predict center lines and lane boundaries directly in 3D. The lane boundary predictions are cast as an object de detection task with fixed anchors followed by refinement. In contrast, in our IRS 2018 paper, we fuse camera and laser sensors for a more robust 3D lane detection. In particular, we first rasterized the LiDAR input onto Versailles view. A CNN outputs the dense ground height from LiDAR, which is used to reproject the camera image onto Versailles view. Finally, camera and LiDAR Versailles view are inputted to a CNN that outputs the distance transform to the lane boundaries. As you can see in the video, our approach produces very precise boundaries in 3D for all the lanes. In contrast, what you typically see um, in our competitors is only the lane of travel and or maybe the next adjacent lane. Therefore, we can use this online mapping to also create high definition maps as we go. However, the world is even more complex. In Toronto, where I live, we say that there are two seasons, winter and construction. These images were captured during my morning commute to work before the lockdown. You can see the diversity of appearance and configurations of construction elements, which makes it quite difficult to detect them. We have created a novel approach to estimate construction elements that, maps, um, that create maps by utilizing a memory, which is updated every time a new sense of reading arrives. It is multimodal, exploiting uh, images where we perform instance segmentation, as well as LiDAR, which is used in order to create very accurate 3D estimations. As you can see on the left hand side, as we drive, we can create maps of the construction, uh, which are very, very accurate. 
and then later on could potentially be used by other vehicles in order to route appropriately given this cost difference. There is little question that self-driving vehicles are going to be central in our society in the future, with all the advancements and discoveries that are being made. As previously discussed, these vehicles require high-definition maps of the regions that they are expected to drive in, and these maps require periodic updates. This motivates the need for a system that is able to autonomously map a region and coordinate an increasingly large fleet of vehicles in an efficient, scalable, and adaptable manner. The idea of an agent or fleet coordinated uh, coordination system is not a new one. A similar idea has been explored in the case of the traveling salesman's problem. In this problem, we have a series of points on a plane. The idea is for the agent or salesman to visit all of the points exactly once in the most efficient manner possible and then return to their original starting position. The vehicle routing problem is a natural extension to this with multiple agents. Given a set number of agents, which all start from the same initial starting city, all are expected to visit some subset of points so that after all agents have, have finished, every point has been visited exactly once. Bringing this back to mapping, each node could be a representation of cities that need to be visited, or even individual streets within a city. There has been a considerable amount of work into TSP or VRP iterative solvers which can relatively consistently determine the optimal solution to a given problem as seen in the case of Concord or LKH3. In the deep learning field, a few steps have been, done, have been made towards developing a deep learning solver that can be con uh, considered more adaptable than iterative solvers, such as the attention module or AM, and encode, attend, and navigate or EAM. There has also been some work into exploration-based architectures as seen in the work on value iteration networks. However, these kind of solutions each run into their own set of issues when running in a more realistic setting. When we consider real road graphs, it becomes evident that they can just be represented by 2D coordinates on a plane, and the complex connections can only re uh, really be represented using spark road graphs. Deep learning solutions usually require that the nodes to be fully encoded just uh, using the relative 2D coordinates and therefore struggle in a graph domain. Furthermore, when we are sending out vehicles in practice, they have to uh, contend with unknown traffic conditions, random mapping failures, and other changes in the environment. Iterative solvers tend to be too slow to adapt the trajectories of a, an entire fleet online with all these changes, and also struggle to effectively integrate stochasticity into their model. In the field of real-time adaptation, learned uh, differential communication has, received, um, has recently provided a means to generate deep learning models that can communicate information between different deep learning agents in a swarm. Similarly, novel methods for properly encoding a graph environment have been developed that could allow us to operate on a street graph directly. However, in practice, mapping tasks tend to be conducted in a somewhat inefficient manner. What tends to happen is an initial trajectory is calculated using an iterative solver offline, and the fleet of vehicles is sent out to perform the mapping task, as in seen in mapping attempt one. After the return, we determine which streets had mapping failures, and we send out the vehicles again, as seen in mapping attempts two and three. This process is repeated until every street has been completely mapped, which as you can see, uh, uh, isn't necessarily the most efficient practice due to the lack of real-time responsiveness and the fact that you have to go back to base and then uh, observe what you have done and then go back into the field. As a result, we approach this problem with the following proposed architecture. We extract node information from the map graph, encoding that information, and then send uh, this node encoding to our novel conceptualization of a value iteration model. This model iteratively exchanges information between each of the nodes and allows for complex planning to occur in a distributed manner. Finally, the communication model exchanges node information between each of the agents and allows relevant discoveries made by each agent to be shared. This final output is also returned to the map graph in the form of a per node value function. 
Getting into the specifics of our method, our value iteration module takes in as input both the encoding node features, the adjacency matrix represented as a dense normalized distance matrix, which can uh, be found, for example, using the freud warshall algorithm. And at each node, information vectors um, for every other node are combined using an attention mechanism and then passed through an LSTM module, which acts as the memory unit for each node and has produced a new set of node features. These are added to the original features as a residual, and this process is repeated over several iterations. At the very last iteration, we decode the node features into a value function at each node. After masking out the nodes um, that have already been completely, completely mapped, we convert our value function into a probability distribution of traveling to that node in the next step. Here, we visualize the multi-agent routing value iteration network's internal action value function as an ever-evolving heat map. On the left, you can see agent 1, and on the right, you can see agent 2. The yellow and green clouds represent the heat map values, and therefore which region the agent is most likely to visit in its next step. The red and blue dots represent the vehicle's positions when making these decisions. The agents generally alternate between focusing on specific regions to systematically map, and more generally exploring new untouched areas. to be exchanged between agents, and in order for information to be retained from previous steps, we integrate a communication model into the system. We decode the final node encoding into a communication vector of node features. These features are saved by um, each agent into a memory unit. When an agent takes their next step, they use yet another attention mechanism to combine information from the other agents into a single set of node features. This process can be interpreted as determining what information is most relevant and accumulating that information. Now we will illustrate how we construct our proposed mapping simulator benchmark and how we generate our novel strongly connected map graph dataset. We begin with taking the map graph of 15 international cities and converting them to weighted adjacency matrices. The nodes represent the streets that need to be visited and the weights of the edges represent the expected time required to travel from one road to a different adjacency road. Next, we randomly sample these graphs for strongly connected smaller subgraphs between 10 to 25 nodes in size. We were able to generate over 23,000 graphs through this practice. Instead of relying on the two dimensional coordinates as is done in the travel assessment problem or the vehicle routing problem, we make no such assumption and instead only provide our model with a weighted adjacency matrix. Once we have all the sample subgraphs, we then stochastically and uh, we then uh, stochastically add realistic challenges. First, we simulate what the realistic traffic should naturally look like, and then use the simulators to assign each um, street in the graph a congestion value. As this value increases, the time required for a vehicle to traverse a street shall also increase. This congestion value is initially unknown to all vehicles and only becomes known after a vehicle has visited the street, thereby mimicking unknown traffic conditions. We similarly simulate the possibility of there being mapping failures when each vehicle attempts to visit the street. This could be caused by unforeseen occlusions, hardware malfunctions, or other unpredictable issues. The way we simulate this is by assigning each street a difficulty index. This index is uniformly sampled from one to three and represents how many passes are required before the mapping task can be considered complete. As this index is unknown to all the vehicles, this is tantamount to each street having a random probability of needing to be revisited. We tested our model using two main learning techniques. The first that we, will dis uh, that we discuss is imitation learning. In order to find a ground truth basis, 
uh, we first transform the street graph by duplicating nodes according to how many passes will be required before the mapping task is complete and alter the edge weighting to reflect the unknown traffic conditions. This allows us to use traditional VRP solvers to find the optimal traversal path, since we no longer have a non-stochastic states in our graph um, that will require online updates. In our case, we use solutions provided to us by the LKH3 iterative solver as our grant truth, and train using teaching forcing, where the agent unrolls according to the grant truth path. We also train using reinforcement learning in order to verify the generalization or uh, the generalizability of our method. We set the negative total traversal cost to be our reward function and use episodic rewards, uh, using episodic rewards, we train using vanilla policy grading. We now present the primary findings of our study in the form of the average cost of a traversal. It should be noted that for all deep learning models, we train only using graphs with 25 or fewer nodes and only with two agents at a time. Cost in this context represents total traversal cost. Um, and gap represents the percentage gap between this method and the Oracle Grand Truth Optima. And runtime is simply the runtime of the algorithm in milliseconds. Firstly, we find that our model generally uh, is able to outperform the solutions provided by the state of the art represented by AKKH3, and also outperforms an IAP greedy search by a considerable amount when enrolled with a single agent. Scaling now to five agents on graphs with four times as many nodes, we use a similar trend. We see a similar trend. Um, where our model outperforms the state of the art solvers and is able to get the closest performance to the true optimal out of the uh, basic alternatives. Compared to other deep learning architectures, this pattern is repeated. We show that our particular architecture, when compared to other uh, generic graph-based alternatives, such as GAT or GBIN, results in the best performance in the single agent case. When it comes to the other deep learning TSP solvers, we found that the reliance on the 2D coordinates and the inability to adapt their traversal hampers the performance uh, in general. Qualitatively, we also observe that they run um, into significant issues when attempting to deal with the multiple traversal aspects of our simulated benchmark, and as such, fail to produce adequate traversals. Due to the inability to adapt and communicate, we only consider them in the single agent setting. Finally, the trend is maintained even when again scaling to larger graphs and increased number of agents. In order to reach a fair comparison, we equip each of the alternative deep learning models seen here with our communication model and therefore only evaluate the path planning abilities of the internal architecture. We would like to note um, how our method when trained with imitation learning it scales much better relative to the, num uh, to the number of nodes than when trained with reinforcement learning. Here we qualitatively compare the mapping process of our method to that of another competitor architecture, specifically that of a generalized value iteration network we find that our model results in a more thorough mapping process where we prioritize filling in all regions um, completely over exploration. The competitive network seems to prioritize exploration over completeness and as such it takes noticeable longer to complete the mapping task. Due to the mapping failures that can occur and the lack of information about where these failures are a priori, um, ensuring completeness of a given region becomes an untrivial task in itself. We similarly compare the qualitative performance of agents trained with reinforcement learning to agents uh, uh, trained with imitation learning. When it's scaling to much larger graphs, we find that imitation learning agents are able to prioritize exploration while simultaneously ensuring that revisiting previously visited regions is done in an efficient manner. One question that we sought to tackle in this work was to determine how adding more agents affect the performance of the model. Here we can see that as we add more agents, the total cost of performing the mapping task only marginally increases, meaning that the mean cost per agent decreases nicely with the number of agents used. Next, we start to um, evaluate the generalizability of our approach. We did this by first changing how the mapping failure distribution was represented and found that regardless of the distribution, as long as there was a decent degree of stochasticity, 
our model of performed for in a state of the art best practices, again represented as LKH3. It should be noted that all evaluations were performed on the same model frame over a uniform well free distribution. We then verify a few more things about our model. Firstly, we determine that agent strain with reinforcement learning is scaled slightly better to the number of agents than agent strain with imitation learning. We also determine that the runtime of our algorithm is scaled much better than current state of the art. This suggests that we could feasibly run our algorithm online. We also finally determine that increasing the number of iterations in the value iteration module, even after training, can provide some increase in performance. We believe that this can be attributed to story formation in the latent features of the neural encodings. In this section uh, of the talk, I show, uh, I show you a novel approach to perform online routing of a swarm of agents in the realistic domain where dynamic uh, challenges are present. By making use of learned value iteration uh, transitions and an attention-based communication protocol, our model is able to outperform the state of the art on real street graphs. Furthermore, it is able to do so in an scalable manner. Note that our novel attention-based graph encoder and a scalable communication method can be directly applied in fields from ride sharing to drone fleet management, and as such, has the potential to be extended uh, to far more applications in the future. Here is a final visualization of our multi-agent value iteration model at work. This work will be visualized on 2,426th Street in Chicago with a fleet of 20 agents. On the left, you see the lasting vehicle trails as they traverse the city, and on the right, their immediate positions. The bright dots at the top of the screen represent the ending and starting locations of the vehicles. Discuss two types of maps employed in some driving, topological maps and high definition maps. I then showcase how to build algorithms where humans can collaborate with machines to reduce the cost of creating HD maps. Finally, I show an approach to route and uh, to route a fleet of vehicles to map entire cities in a dynamic and coordinated manner. Thanks for, uh, for your attention. This is all for me. Thank you.